Hello, this is Byrne, and today I'm going to reveal seven truths about men you need to know if you want to develop an unshakable bond with a guy who feels excited about marrying you and moves toward commitment without any nagging or any pushing on your end. Hello, this is Byrne. Welcome to another edition of BurnMendez.com. If you'd like to learn how you can attract your ideal life partner without the need for gimmicks, manipulation, games, or stupid techniques, make sure to hit the subscribe button right now to be notified of new episodes as they come out. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to get more of what you want through understanding men more powerfully and from a place of compassion and from a place of heart. This is not about you giving men hall passes. This is not about you lowering your standards. This is not about you saying, well, I guess all men are this way, therefore I'm screwed. This is about you knowing how our mind works a little bit more than you do right now and how to understand our perspective so that when you communicate with us, so that when you connect with us, so that when you're seeking commitment from someone who is a guy, you can do it in a way that is serving to you instead of something that goes against your best interests. So the first truth about men you need to know is that we are highly emotional beings who often lack the clarity or the sophistication to express those feelings into the outside world. Think about it this way. We've been trained and taught and rewarded since an early age for our strength. And our strength typically is physical power or it's the ability to do a specific task without thinking too much about it, without making too much fuss, without making any drama about the whole situation. So basically, sucking it up is something that we've been rewarded for, for our entire life. Now, this creates something really painful inside most men, which is an, not only is our brain wired different from yours, and it's already harder for us to express verbally the way most women do, but when you've been rewarded for not expressing your feelings and when you've been rewarded for doing things that require for you to disconnect from your feelings sometimes, then it's hard when somebody comes in front of us and we're all of a sudden bumping against our inability to share our truths. I'll share a statistic that will give you an example and why I'm talking about this as the first thing. For every one woman who commits suicide, there's 3.88 men. So almost four men for every one woman. Now, this is all, it's not just talking about the challenge in mental health that exists among, among some men, but it's also talking about why would somebody do that? Typically, besides a mental health challenge, it's an inability to express something that's inside of you to the point where you, there's no alternative, there's no way, there's no road outside. You can't express it, you can't talk about it. So you basically, the only solution that somebody like that finds sometimes regrettably and painfully is to take their own life. So when you understand that we are human beings who live in constant insecurity, in constant shame, then when you communicate with us and you don't necessarily get the same answer and the same clarity that you would get from a girlfriend, instead of just going to the place where, oh, this guy's just not getting it, he's not feeling it, if you have a little bit more patience, and I'm not talking about a lifetime of patience or years of patience, I'm talking about a little bit more patient and a compassionate approach where you start maybe with open-ended questions instead of the direct to the point answer that you want. If it's something emotionally challenging for a guy to answer, start with something more broad or share your observations about what's taking place, share your feelings about how his actions are making you feel so that he can open up more instead of feeling maybe uh, rejecting of your idea or feeling defensive about the whole thing. Number two is we're in constant fight with our instincts in a way that makes it hard sometimes to know what to do. Men today are more confused than at any point in history. There are certain things that have taken place that are making it clear for men how to act, how to move forward. But sometimes we get two different thoughts, basically. One is be strong, do what you need to do, make a mark in the world, focus on what you need to accomplish. On the other side, we hear from women, well, I need you to be expressive, I need you to be sensitive, I need you to be hard open. So sometimes the, the di difference between both makes it hard to know how to do things. For example, women love to be pursued by men, but there's an edge of that pursuit that feels creepy or that feels icky, and sometimes that edge has been tinkering into the men don't understand sometimes how to act. Sometimes they feel like if they were even to ask a woman out or they approach her at a bar, for example, that she might feel like he's infringing in her space. So men are more weird about how to interact with women at this point than at any point in history. 
So just have understanding of that. The second thing, we feel we want to fight and we can't really fight, but our instincts tell us to do that. We're in constant competition with anyone around us, whether we are accepted or not, and with ourselves. We want to have sex much more than is really appropriate or healthy in life. So all the time, men are having to push down certain feelings and emotions. If you couple that with the inability to express thoughts and feelings, then it creates a really challenging space for men. So when the, the, the key point here for you is when you understand that guys, even guys who are super conscious and super confident, have insecurities, when you understand that we have more shame than we allow or we share with the world, then it doesn't mean, again, as I shared first, that you give us a whole pass. It just means that you have a different approach. Instead of your first reaction being this and then expletive here, uh, understand that we have certain reasons for being a certain way. And if we're not being disrespectful, then give us the benefit of the doubt and understand that sometimes all we need is some understanding. All we need is some clarity in terms of what you need so that we can move forward. Number three, we need more space to think and formulate ideas than you might imagine. So here's what I mean by that. It would be incredibly common for you to talk to a girlfriend of yours about a problem you have that may not even be a super big problem, but you don't have the answer to it and formulate the solution on the go back and forth with her. And at the end of the conversation, which might be three hours later, by the way, then you either don't have a solution for it or you have a solution that's completely different from the first one you shared. We have been trained and taught that we shouldn't go back on our word, that we shouldn't flip flop. So most men are going to have a very tough challenge or won't want to talk out a solution out loud with you before he knows what the answer is. So if you're pushing him for that and he's taking the time to formulate those ideas, understand that he might just need a day, he might just need a week. It doesn't mean that you never go back to it. It doesn't mean that he's off the hook. It just means that sometimes he's not going to share his idea, his solution sometimes until he has something clear that he can stand by. He's not going to want to necessarily go and explore solution A, B, C, D, E with you the way a girlfriend would. And if you understand that instead of feeling frustrated, you know that there's a path that we can get to that solution, but it may be different from yours, then you'll eliminate so much frustration from your own life. Now, before I go into truths four to seven, which are pretty powerful, I'm going to make an invitation right now. If you're a single woman watching this, there's a high likelihood that you don't fully understand the number one reason, the truth, the root cause of why you're still single. You might know some symptoms, you might have some grasp of what's taking place, but if you really want to understand what's the real reason why you're still single, I've created a free quiz that you can take in about 60 seconds and have an answer. And not only that, but understand what you need to do about it. So go to the first link in the description of this video. You will see a page that looks like this. Answer a few simple questions. And in the next 60 seconds, you have your number one answer in terms of what's the truth behind why you're single. And better yet, What's the single next step, best return on investment for your actions based on your specific challenge to turn this around and attract the kind of guy you want? We need to know that you need us so we can feel compelled to take action and even to commit. When a guy doesn't feel like his heart, his light, his energy can have true value to your life because you're so fiercely independent, and in that fierce independence, there's not room for your vulnerability to accept him into your life, to accept his help into your life, to accept his guidance in any way, his care, his support, then we feel less than in that relationship. We'll always get that need met. So if you're a fiercely independent woman who has learned that the strength means never depending on anyone for anything, then the likelihood that a guy will want to commit to you for life is very small because it's emotional suicide for someone to connect with someone who can never open up to receive his gift. Number five is when you're in pain, we really need some guidance to understand how we can help you. Here's what I mean. Many times you have a problem or a challenge that you only need to vent about. You don't need solutions but you still would love to communicate those things and vent with your guy. Let him know that that's all you want. Why? Because we innately want to fix things. We innately want to change things that are not working to things that are working. It's just built into our DNA. It's who we are. That's never going to change. So when a man sees that you're 
experiencing something, if you can just let us know what you need, if it's space, let us know that. If it's care, let us know that. If it's a hug, if it's, if it's understanding, if it's, a, if it's advice in any way, the clearer you are about what your needs are, the happier your guy will be. Because if he knows that all you need is space, for example, that day, or if all you need is a hug, then he won't feel like he has to guess. And if he doesn't feel like he has to guess, he can relax more, he can be his best self in front of you. Number six is you, you need to know when to step away so we can feel your absence and take the next step. There's many women I've connected with who have good things going on with guys where the guy feels he's too certain and he feels no sense of urgency to move the needle forward. And by that, I mean to go to the next level in the relationship, to get engaged, to uh, get married. When you feel like your guy doesn't value what he has and your approach is simply to add more to his life and not have him know that you're somebody valuable and precious, then you need to take a step back. You need to let, I mean, it's not about playing games. You don't even let him know what's taking place, but you need to take a step back so he can feel your absence and he can get in his head. Losing this woman is far more painful than whatever bullshit I'm going through right now in terms of lack of commitment. Once he gets a chance to feel that, then his level of action will be far more likely than if he never feels like he can lose you. So again, this is not about playing games. You would have a clear conversation with him if that's the case, but you would take some time, take some space away, travel if you need to, have some way for him to grasp his life without you so he knows what he needs to do and he knows that he can't afford to lose you. Number seven is we thrive with your light, so don't let it go. What I mean by that is if in the path of the relationship, the path of living, the path of pain and suffering, which is inevitable in his lifetime, you connect with a guy and you start losing that light, that radiance, that excitement, that passion, that fulfillment, that joy, that magic, that special thing that made him fall in love with you. And some of it has to do with him, but some of it has to do with your own decisions and your own life and your own fears and your own challenges. If you don't do something to continue owning your light, he will lose that connection with you. Just like if he stops connecting with his passion and purpose, and if he stops being confident, and if he stops being ambitious, you feel somewhat different about him. In the same way, if you let go of your light, if you just disconnect from that source of humanity that makes you feel so unique, something that he cannot create on his own, then the path towards engaging and getting married just separates from today. Why? Because he needs some visceral level of connection. He needs a punch to the heart, basically, that comes in the easiest and most flowing way when you are happy with your life and you're doing things that make you feel alive. Hope this is helpful and useful. If you want to understand the number one reason you're single, go to the first link and take that free quiz. If you like this video, click like or thumbs up. And last but not least, if you like my subscribe to my channel. <laughs> if you'd like my hand holding and help and guidance so you can attract the guy you want in a fraction of the time and eliminate so much time wasting, then second link in the description will allow you to apply to work with me. Thank you so much. And as always, I challenge you to live a full and a conscious life.